Hello! Welcome to Children's Church on Mother's Day. Um, we are going to be reading today from Matthew 7. So if you could go ahead and turn with me to Matthew 7. Uh, we're going to start and read verses 1 through 6. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. Uh, Matthew 7, 1 through 6. Do not judge so that you won't be judged. For with the judgment you use, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye and look, there's a log in your eye. Hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Don't give what is holy to dogs or toss your pearls before pigs. They will trample them with their feet, turn and tear you to pieces. Okay, so what do you think it means when it says to not judge so that you won't be judged? Jesus teaches us that we shouldn't worry about what others do or don't do. Um, instead, we should focus on ourselves and make sure what we are doing is right. Um, sometimes it's easier for us to focus on others and make a big deal about the things that they do instead of focusing on what we are doing. And he said that it's like trying to take a speck, which a speck is like a little tiny piece of dust out of our friend's eye, while in reality we have a huge log or a huge stick in our own eye. So instead of focusing on that tiny speck that's in our brother's eye, we should take care of our own problems and faults um, before we tell others how to fix theirs. And what do you, what kind of faults do you think he could be talking about there? So it's pretty easy for us to spot when others are being mean or rude, maybe selfish or dishonest. Um, but it's oftentimes much harder to tell when we're being that way, <laughs> we see it with others just right off. We're like, well, they're being mean, but it's hard to tell when, when we're, we're, we're acting that way. And the Bible actually says that we are being a hypocrite, um, which a hypocrite is um, someone with like a false appearance or being something that you're not like, Essentially, it's like you're lying. Um, so the Bible tells us that we're being a hypocrite when we focus on all the bad things that everybody else does, but never um, the faults that we have. Um, in James 1, through 25, it says to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So does this mean that we can never tell someone when they are sinning, which I think you guys know what sinning is, right? Sinning is like the bad things that we do, that's sin. Um, so does that mean that we can't tell someone that they're doing something bad? No, it's not necessarily saying that. It's actually good. The Bible says it's good to tell fellow believers um, when they're doing something that isn't following scripture. But it's important to not judge others and think that they are, that you are better than they are and only like focus on what they're doing and judge them. So it's saying to not do that. All right, so next we're moving on to, we're gonna stay in Matthew 7 but we're gonna read verses seven through 12 next. So if you could turn with me to Matthew seven, we're gonna start in verse seven and go through verse 12. I'm gonna go ahead and read that. Keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep searching and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, 
and the one who searches finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What man among you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them. This is the law and the prophets. Okay, so the idea here is not that God will give you the most awesome toy when you ask, or just whatever you ask for. That's not what it's saying. Um, you're not supposed to use God as just a means to get whatever you want, right? So if you look at the life of the apostles, um, they suffered, but God was looking out for them. So in what ways, and we're going to read from Romans 8.28 to find out. So Paul says to the believers in Rome, in Romans 8.28, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. So God has our best at heart. He wants people to come to salvation from their sin, which we talked about that earlier. Those are the bad things that we do, um, which sometimes suffering is part of what we have to go through to understand that we need him. So, it may not be fun to go through suffering, but that's sometimes something that we need to go through um, to know that we need him. But God is working everything to bring people to know him, which is salvation, but he also takes care of the needs for those that are saved. He takes care of us. For example, I'm going to read from Luke 12. Jesus says in Luke 12, Consider how the wildflowers grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass, which is in the field today and is thrown into the furnace tomorrow, how much more will he do for you, you of little faith? Don't keep striving for what you should eat and what you should drink, and don't be anxious. For the Gentile world eagerly, eagerly seeks all these things, and your Father knows that you will need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be provided for you. So what we can learn from that is not to be anxious or to worry, because God knows what we need, and he wants to meet those needs. So it's important for us to seek after him and know him. And the way that we know God more is to um, spend time with him, like reading your Bible and praying. That draws you closer to him. So let's think about this. Since it's Mother's Day, let's think about this in light of our mothers. So let's see here. I remember a time where when I was younger, about your guys' age, where I loved to ride my bicycle. And um, my mom told me, you need to wear your helmet when you're riding your bicycle. You guys probably hear that too, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so one time, my sisters and I, we weren't wearing our helmets, so we were disobeying. Um, and my sister fell and she hit her head and she got, you know, a bad, a bad cut on her head. So while... I didn't really like to wear my helmet. It was kind of annoying to put it on. And I just didn't want to. She, by telling me to wear that, was actually looking out for me and trying to keep me safe. Um, so she had my well-being at heart. So um, remember that today <laughs> to listen to your moms <laughs> as it's Mother's Day. And... Um, and sometimes when we don't understand what they're telling us, maybe it's because she actually has your best interests at heart, just like God does for us. 
All right, well, that is the end of my lesson today. I think your, your teachers have some questions to go over with you. So um, thank you for letting me speak today. See you later. <laughs>